Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Matt, uh, for that uh, very interesting and informative discussion. A lot of what I'm going to say is similar, but maybe with a slightly different perspective from the, the, the U.S. perspective um, of uh, how we develop strategy and some basic principles. And uh, then I look very forward very much to our uh, question and answer period. Uh, I guess my slides haven't come up yet. They're still looking for them. Uh, can I just push here? Okay. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So uh, the first uh, slide I show here is probably hard to see at all, but the idea is that it shows the entire U.S. government, not just the military. And, uh, and in fact, I'm a career USAID person, development person. I understand you talked about development and security. And it's like, well, why is a development person talking about national security? Okay. Well, I think that's one of the main points I want to make is when we talk about national security, it's more than just military. And, and I'm sure you've already discussed that. And I know if you're like me, that's a hard jump to make. All my life, I've been focused on what I know best and my expertise, which is development. And now to think beyond my own personal expertise and think much more broadly is what we're talking about when we think, how do we think strategically? And I think that's a challenge for each one of us, whether we're military, civilian, uh, different agencies. When we're thinking strategically, we have to sort of think out of our our uh, own institutional and, and, uh, and expertise uh, box and think much more strategically that our security as a nation is more than just the military aspects. It includes the economic, the diplomatic, uh, social, so many other parts. So that's one of the things that I wanted to uh, sort of emphasize with this slide. Now the next slide uh, is uh, similar to, to much of what Matt was saying but maybe uh, in a bit, in, in a different order, almost, of things. When we're thinking about developing a strategy, the most important thing is a very honest appraisal and assessment of the context, uh, both internally and externally. What are your strengths and weaknesses as a nation? Okay, and again, trying to be honest is, is going to be very critical. What are your threats? and opportunities in the region that you're dealing with? What, what is this, the context that you are working within? What is your political context, as uh, Dr. Matt was saying? That's important, too. How do you make decisions within your country? What's the political nature of your country? You have to be very honest and, and understand all these things before you can really uh, move forward in, in developing a, 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 a strategy. Then, of course, identifying what are your national interests, and those are the highest level interests. Our inclination is to move directly to objectives. Okay, I've got this problem, what am I going to do about it? But no, you need to step back first and identify, okay, what really our, are our national interests? And then from that you can set your priorities before you make the objectives. Okay, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then obviously what are your threats and opportunities, both from your internal uh, you know, environment and context, but even your neighborhood, your uh, other friends, and, and, uh, and, and so on. And then once you've, you know, done that strong assessment of, of your opportunities, your threats, your context, then you can define what your goals and objectives are based on those interests. And then from there you flow to, okay, what resources do we have? The means, and again, not just military, but political means, Economic means, social means, uh, development means. You, you have so many different ways of, of using means into an international. Can I, you have the United Nations. You have the African Union. Those are all resources for your use as well for, for uh, you know, uh, achieving your objectives. And then, okay, how do I use those resources, the, the ways? Okay, and that's when you really start getting into your strategy. So you... You don't want to jump directly to your strategy. First, you have to identify these other aspects. Consider asymmetry. By that, I mean if your threat is military, maybe the best uh, you know, way to deal with that threat is economic. It may not always be 
direct fighting fire with fire. You may, the best way to fight fire may be with water. Uh, and, and so you, you need to think uh, sort of outside the box. And then your theory of victory. What I mean by that is a, a kind of a logic, okay? If I do this, using those resources, I will achieve that end. So you, you need to think in that way of a, a theory, a strategic logic. If then, I'll achieve this. And with the why, going back to your national interests. Um, costs and risks are important. Again, it's financial costs. It might also be human costs. And costs of relationships with your uh, neighbors. Uh, costs of uh, political costs within your country. All those have to be assessed as a part of your strategy. And then the risk, okay? And it, what's interesting, okay, what are my, the risks that the strategy may not be achieved? What are the risks if the strategy is achieved? The, uh, you know, what's going to happen? There, sometimes that's a risk as well. And then uh, you have risks to your strategy and risks from your strategy. It's kind of interesting. Uh, so this is not so much, this is different than threats. This is the risk of your strategy itself when you move forward that, uh, you know, you, you look at that. Uh, and then the element of time, okay? By that I mean, is this a six-month strategy? Is it a 10-year strategy? Is it something in between? As you think of your ways of what you're going to do, is there a sequence? Do you do them all at once? Or do you do this piece first and then that piece? So you have to consider that as a part of your strategic process. Uh, the, the elements of time, okay? And then, uh, finally, of course, to, to, uh, to implement the actual thing, once you've developed it, you need strategic leadership from the top and uh, from the different aspects of, the, uh, of your uh, society, from your, your political makeup, whether it's military, civilian, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, as Matt talked about, a vision that everyone can get along with uh, and can, can be supportive of, and, and we believe very much that it needs to be a public strategy if it's a national strategy. You want to bring on board your population. You want to bring on board even the opposition, if possible. Uh, there may be, of course, some aspects of your strategy which are classified, but the basic components of it should be uh, public so that everyone can support it and the teamwork. Now, the next slide I, I use just as an illustration to help identify some of the core components before developing the, the details of your strategy. And this is the triangle of interests, threats and opportunities, and then your objectives. So as you do your assessment of your context, you do an honest idea of what your national interests are, and then what are the threats and opportunities that are affecting the, those interests, okay? Internal threats, external threats, and so on. And opportunities, again. Then, based on that, you can decide what objectives do you need to serve those interests and to, you know, address those threats or opportunities, take advantage of them or mitigate them, okay? So that, also, that helps you a lot when you jump ahead to objectives and say, no, no, wait a minute. Are these objectives actually serving our interest? And will they mitigate the threats or take advantage of the opportunities? If the objective, when you do your assessment, is say, okay, this is a great objective, but it's actually not really serving our interest, then it's not so important. Or it sounds like a great objective, but it's not really going to help us deal with that threat. Well, then you need to modify your objective to make sure that it's doing that. So you, that triangle becomes very important. Once you've established that, then you can move to the details of the, of the strategy, uh, you know, the, of, your, uh, of your ways and means, okay? And then as you think about your ways and means, okay, you have your objective, your threats and opportunities, then again, think way beyond just the military. And these are the sort of four main categories of, of uh, instruments of power, as we use the term uh, here in the US, mm -hmm. okay? So you have economic, you have psychological, or sometimes it's called information, intel, you know, sort of public diplomacy, using the media 
that whole aspect of, of information and psychological, social uh, instrument of, of putting forth your uh, strategy, political, of course, both internal and external. That includes diplomacy and your relations with other countries uh, in your neighborhood, uh, at the UN, uh, with the big powers, uh, whatever, okay? That, that whole sort of political diplomatic, and then, of course, the military. And then in each one of those, you have different levels. You have a strategic, operational, and tactical level. And even in the diplomatic and economic, you can have strategic, operational, and tactical. So you have quite a, a, a big tool bag that you have to think about. And how do you integrate them all together? The time factor, which one goes first and second? And then uh, how do you make best advantage? And keep checking back. Is this really addressing our interests? Will it mitigate the threats or take advantage of the opportunities? Uh, that aspect. And in order to do all of that, of course, obviously, again, it goes back to what I said right from the beginning, a lot of this is beyond the military. So it's so important to integrate civilian, talk to, uh, you know, even people outside the government. I know when, when we've worked on developing strategies in the U.S. here, we will have sessions that's led by the National Security Council where we bring in business leaders to get their input. We'll bring in uh, civil society leaders from uh, uh, either from think tanks or even from uh, uh, advocacy groups on different issues and get their input and give them some ideas to, to say, well, we were thinking about this. What, what do you think? And they, well, but you forgot about that, you know, as well as, of course, military and your neighbors. Uh, so you can, can bring all of that as a part of the process. Now the next slide, I don't know if you recognize any of these guys. Uh, those of you who studied uh, World War II uh, and the European allies, the, the guy in the middle, Eisenhower. Of course, uh, everybody knows Eisenhower and he became president. And he was the visionary who had this grand strategy idea of, you know, the, the D-Day invasion of bringing the uh, Allied forces back into uh, Europe and, and defeating the Nazis. So he was very critical in terms of strategic leadership. Then the guy on the right-hand side, Patton, some of you have heard about him. So he was not so much the visionary, but he was the guy on the ground with the troops who was a, a very great commander of troops on the ground. You need that type too. Actually, Eisenhower was not so good at that. Uh, but he was a good visionary, so you need both of those. But now what about the other guy, Wiedemeyer? Nobody ever heard of him. He was the guy who took the vision of Eisenhower and put it into an, end, uh, an objectives, ends, ways, means package that then could be implemented by Patton. So you need all three parts of those in your strategic leadership group. And so as you're thinking about developing a strategy, make sure you have all of those people around the table. Not just the, the visionary, not just the action guy on the ground. He's needed too because he may say, oh, no, that sounds like a great vision, but it won't work. Because I've been on the field and I know that that, that, that won't work. So you need that reaction and then you need the guy who can think about, okay, how do I bring all these pieces together? So that's why it's important to have all those aspects. In fact, some of those, then it becomes very personal relationships. It's hard to see, but way back, you know, when they were at Staff College, Patton and Eisenhower were close friends and they stood right next to each other in that picture. So it shows the importance of those personal relationships that you all know. I don't have to tell you how important the personal relationships are. Uh, and developing those relationships, obviously, within your own service, but even across in between military and civilian and, and other aspects. And then, uh, f you know, <laughs> I, I had, is that the right? Yeah. Um, in, in the U.S., we have so many national strategies. Oh, go back, okay? You want to take a picture there? I think, can we make these uh, slides available to the students? Yes. Yeah, so you'll have the slides. Uh, you can use them, okay. Um, we have so many national strategies in the U.S., Okay, and we just wanted to show you. So there are national strategies and then there are national strategies. Uh, and some of them are, are 
more broad and and uh, you know one of these if you look closely about two-thirds of the way down it's a national strategy to promote the health of honeybees and uh, other pollinators okay so you can have a lot of different types of national strategies but each one of them uses the same basic principles develop you know really do an assessment of your context define what your interests what your threats and opportunities and then based on that what your objectives are and then you develop your, your ways and means to do that and think about your costs and, and, uh, and, um, and risks, okay? So one other thing I wanted to mention is as you finalize your strategy, think about the basic things of feasibility, sustainability, affordability. We, we call them the illities because <laughs> you have to think about all of those, okay? Uh, and suitability and, and so on, you know, within your strategy. And uh, it's often good to have a red team, somebody who's, you know, a group whose job is to find all the holes in your strategy, to keep you honest. Uh, don't ever forget your assumptions. What are your assumptions of your own strengths and weaknesses, of your adversaries? What, you know, you need to have an idea of what your adversary's strategy is as well, and what you assume they're trying to do. And that, and then, of course, you need to be, um, you know, uh, evaluating continually, measuring success. It's even good if you have, when you finalize your strategy, to have some sort of benchmarks, okay? Within three months, we'll achieve this. Within six months, that. And then you check and say, okay, how are we doing? And where's the problem? Do I need to make adjustments? The flexibility is important. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then you can move uh, forward. Now, it's a strategy, as uh, Matt was saying, is a, is a living document. It never finishes. It always needs to be uh, updated and improved. And as he emphasized, every country is different. So what I was trying to show was some sort of basic principles, but your context is very different than our context. And, uh, and that becomes so important. So thank you very much. I look forward to your questions.